Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's video, Argus in Real Life, The Essence of Collections Management. My name is Bradley, and I will be your moderator. In this video, we will address Argus as an off-the-shelf system and its adaptability. Before we start, I would like to provide some information about our company and introduce today's, today's presenter. Lucidia is a software developing company specialized in museum and archival collections management solutions, as well as knowledge management and library automation systems. Our brands include Sydney, Presto, Argus, Archivera, Eloquent, and Quadrastar. Now I would like to introduce today's presenter, Rima Ganem. Rima is the cultural sector research analyst at Lucidia, and she will be giving us an in-depth look at Argus in today's video. Thank you, Brad, and hello, everyone. As Brad mentioned, our session today addresses off-the-shelf systems. Commercially available off-the-shelf, or what is referred to as COTS, C-O-T-S, are solutions that are ready packaged and adapted to the needs of an organization, yet are not custom made or developed from scratch for the user institution. So we thought we would bring Argus to the forefront today to demonstrate that despite it falling under this definition, it still is extremely flexible and goes way beyond the basic functionality of a CMS. Let's take a look at the agenda then. Our presentation is divided into three parts. In the first one, we will go over some of the major functionality of Argus. In other words, what we expect from it out of the box when we first use it. Then we will demonstrate how, despite it being an off-the-shelf CMS, it still is flexible and has ample room for customization. And in the last part of the presentation, we will visit certain areas of the system that go beyond the basics of a collections management system and add more value to the daily work of a museum administrator. Argus off the shelf. What to expect from Argus when we consider using it? There are five points to discuss here. The first one is access. Argus is a web-based or browser-based solution. It works on all the major web browsers, and all we need is our login credentials, regardless of our location or the device which we are using. When it comes to hosting, there are two different options. Depending on the preferences of the user institution, Argus can be hosted on-premise, for instance. Sometimes we know there could be certain regulations or security measures that bring the user to choose this option. But there's also the option of SaaS or software as a service, where we're talking about a license and a subscription model, and the solution is hosted by the provider. In this case, it's Lucidia. Configuration. Museum administrators are often led to do coding or programming work out of need. We, well, we truly think it's enriching to gain new skills on the job, but this is a completely different profession. The learning curve is often high. It's challenging to learn these new languages, and it often comes at the expense of one's time at work. And museum administrators are not expected to have this technical expertise to do coding. So Argus is built with this factor in mind. There are no coding skills that are required. The system is highly configurable, and admin users are even trained during the implementation phase uh, to know what areas to visit in the system in order to make changes and edits according to their needs and preferences. Tech support, and this point is related to the previous one in a sense where we're talking about uh, technical expertise. And it's a very important aspect to take into account when considering a new system, especially when there's limited uh, IT support or there's no ability to outsource the service. So we ask ourselves, how fast will we be able to resolve our technical issues? Uh, is there anyone on the team who would know the system well enough to help in these situations? So in the case of Argus, uh, technical support is available 24-7. What we see here is a snapshot or a screenshot from the uh, website of Lucidia, 
where there's a section that is dedicated to support and our users, our users can reach out to us, whether it's by sending us a message, emailing us, or uh, calling us by phone. Uh, but there's also the training portals, which we see on the right-hand side of the screen. And these are exclusive for the users, where they would log in and they would find documentation, uh, videos, tutorials in order to learn the system better, understand it, and sometimes even resolve certain issues without having to resort to tech support. But in any case, uh, all backups, all system updates, troubleshooting, all the support is available uh, for our users and Lucidia can provide it. So it's all taken care of and there's no need to worry about that aspect. And the last point I would like to make here is that Argus is built for museums and cultural institutions collections, answering the specificities of the field and accommodating permanent collections. So what we're going to do here is that we're going to take a look at different areas and components of Argus just to visit it and see what options are available. What I see on this screen is the admin interface. I'm logged in as an administrator, so I have access to the entire system. We're going to begin with the activity area. So in activities, we're recording all different uh, types of information that are related to the collections, but are not directly uh, descriptive of the objects. Those activities could be accessions, perhaps uh, information related to exhibitions, deaccessioning a work, perhaps, uh, loans incoming, outgoing, or any kind of um, information to prepare for those activities. So once I select any of those uh, activity types from the drop-down list, a set of fields open up for me so that I can record the information. And since we talked about loans, I would like to point out the loans management dashboard. So Argus is recording all these different activities that are happening in the system that are related to the loans. And the user is able to go to this area or to this side and search through all the loans, browse through them. Um, we can also uh, check all the uh, active loans, whether they're incoming, outgoing, any outstanding tasks, we can, because we can create tasks, we can assign them to other team members so we can check what the progress of the work is like. So anything related to loans has its own area too in order to track this activity. And last but not least, while we're talking about tracking this activity, the, the system also uh, summarizes all this information with numbers, so we have them in the statistics tab. Besides activities in Argus, we also have the object area. So the object area is meant to record all information directly related to the objects in the collection. I'm going to add a blank record here. And depending on what type of object I'm going to record, I will, again, in the same way, select it from the drop-down list. Let's say if it's an artwork, I can select uh, the fine art collection, and I would have the set of fields that are relevant to that type of collection. Argus also has a site area. So sites are a little different. Again, I'm going to add a blank record here to show you. Sites are a little different because they are not treated like an object that is on site. Uh, it's not described the same way. And by site, we mean uh, an excavation site, an archeological site, a shipwreck perhaps, anything that is under the care of the institution or the museum, but is offsite and is large enough to be uh, one described and uh, to retain information related to it that is different uh, to an object that's within the collection in the museum.
There's also the conservation area in Argus. So our conservators are happy here because that's their own area where they also record the information that is related to their work and very specific to their work. Uh, they can create tasks with deadlines, they can attach uh, documents, they can attach images, they can even annotate those images in order to see more details and point directly at the spots or the places where treatment or care needs to, needs to happen. So that's briefly visiting the different components of Argus to see what kind of information it handles and what kind of information we can record in it. Uncompromised flexibility. In this part, we're going to demonstrate how Argus is adaptable on many levels, despite it being an off-the-shelf CMS. We're going to talk about the system's flexibility and governance, in design, and in use. In terms of governance, we can create different levels of access so that different users can view and use different areas of the system. For instance, a volunteer or an intern might have read-only access to the system or limited data entry, perhaps, whereas a full-time staff member would have full reading and editing access. Another aspect that is governed or controlled by the user is the data that goes onto the portal. So the public interface that is integrated within the CMS is controlled by this admin interface. Any updates or changes are instantly reflected on the portal. So let's demonstrate that in a, a short exercise. What I'm going to do here is that I'm going to go to the public interface. And what we see here is uh, the portal. This is where our visitors, our online visitors, search and browse through our collections. So I'm going to search for a record, and I'm going to go and find it in the back end or on the admin side. So let's go to search collections. Keeping it very simple, I'm going to type a keyword here, which is culture. And let's say I'm going to select this artwork here. We see the record view, an image, a description on the side, and we notice that I can hover over those terms here, and it's all controlled vocabulary, so I can click on them and it takes me to all the other records in the database that are uh, tagged with the same uh, term. So now let's move to the back end of the system the admin side, and go and look for the exact same record. What we need to do is that we need to go to the object area, because as we said, this is where we look for our records. I'm going to select subject as my parameter, and I'm again going to type sculpture. I see my record in the list of results. And here I have the record view. So we notice that the record view, first of all, looks very similar to what we see on the portal. Um, the interface is very similar. It's actually the same one. But the difference is that we have these tabs right here because I'm on the admin side. And once I go to edit mode and edit, this is where I will be able to see all the fields and where I can do all my data entry. So let's say I'm going to remove uh, public art from this list of subject terms. All I need to do is simply delete the term right here. And I'm going to save my work. Work is saved. Great. We will go back to the public interface and we're going to refresh the page. And there you go, public art has disappeared from the subject terms. So the changes are instant, really. There's no need to wait, collect all these, uh, all this different data that needs to be uploaded onto the system in batches in order to make the changes. Any small change from the back end is instantly reflected on the portal. Now, when it comes to adaptability in design, 
Argus is also flexible on several fronts. One, the different elements in the record view, which we see right here, can be moved around according to the user's preferences. So this can be done both on uh, the back end or on the admin interface, as well as on the public interface. So when we talk about the different elements, we're talking about the image, the description here, they can be moved around. We can have a larger image, a smaller one, the description could be below. And I will take you behind the scenes really to show you how that looks like on the admin side. So this is the exact same uh, page that we're looking at, but this is the template. This is where the design happens. So you see there is no coding that is required. It's a simple matter of a drag and drop in order to move things around. So this is a brief, uh, you know, uh, just to give you a brief idea about how it looks like from the back end. There's also the capability of customizing the home page of the public interface or the portal. And here we're going to take a look at that. So it blends in better with the institution's website while keeping the branding and the identity of the institution. So we're looking at the public interface or the portal, the home page or the landing page, and everything about this screen can also be changed, uh, whether it's the color, the background, um, the, the logo, obviously, the text, the tabs, and the main image right here. All kinds of content can be customized. And the tabs and the fields in the back end are also things that can be configured or that can be customized. So they can be edited, removed, depending on their use. Uh, they could be renamed, or we can even add fields if we wish so. And the last point related to design that I'd like to show here are the views. So with Argus, we can create different views for different users. Some views could exclude certain tabs, so they look less cluttered, and we're going to see. So right now we're on the full record view where we see all the tabs open for us, but we can change to the limited views for a certain staff member where we see that some of the tabs have disappeared. There's also, for example, the volunteer data entry view where we're limiting this volunteer or this user to um, input data in only one area of the system and this person won't have access to the rest of uh, the components or the areas let's say so since i'm logged in as an administrator i have access to all these different views available as for the flexibility in use I would say there are many areas of the system uh, that could be demonstrated, but we chose to highlight only a couple of features that are helpful in the daily activities of a collections administrator. Let's begin with the saved searches. So under the different methods for searching in the object area, uh, there's the saved search button here. Saved searches are helpful in the case where we would like to save a set of records to return to often. And we have two different types of saved searches. One which we could call really a static saved search and another one that is dynamic. A dynamic saved search is set according to certain parameters we want, and it gets updated according to that criteria. So for instance, we see in the list a, a set of records that's uh, entitled contains geocoded maps. So these are all the records that have geocoded maps. Any new record that enters the database and does have a geocoded map will be added to this list of records. 
The other type of saved searches is usually used when we're preparing for exhibitions. Uh, and we have sets of objects for reference, like a working list, for instance. So it's a set of records that is fixed and does not really change. Instead of having to create reports on and on, every time we need to refer to this list of uh, objects, we have them all saved in one, uh, in one saved search or can search. Report templates, since we're talking, we briefly mentioned the reports. We also have uh, the option of printing reports, uh, creating as many different reports as we like with Argus. So I see this print button right here. If I go to it, I have a list of all these different report templates that opens up. And with Argus, I'm not limited to this amount of uh, reports, but I can create as many templates as I like. They can be designed in different ways. They could contain different types of information. Some of them could be a little more formal to be used uh, with ex externally with other institutions, but others could be less formal for the everyday work. So let's say I'm selecting this uh, report with large images. It's just to show you how it looks like. The system downloads the PDF for me and I will have a report of the current uh, record which I was, uh, I was having on the screen. Going beyond the basic CMS. To summarize so far, we went over the major functionality of Argus that make it an off the shelf system. Then we saw how it can be adaptable to the user's needs. In this last part, uh, we're going to visit a suite of components in Argus that go beyond the basic features of a CMS. So these are components that uh, exist to streamline the work of museum ad administrators and make their job more efficient and less stressful. And we know as the needs of the industry evolve over time, and we know they're evolving fast these days, there are new features that are developed to make the use of Argus less burdening. So in this part, we're going to visit the request management module. We're going to take a look at metrics. Uh, we're going to see the user contributed content within Argus and the Argus mobile app. Let's begin with the request management module. So the request management module is a built-in component in Argus. It's meant to record and track research requests. So online visitors send their research requests via the portal and they are saved and can be viewed on this dashboard. So the dashboard looks like the loans one we saw earlier, as you can see. Uh, where we can search through all the requests and assign even some to our colleagues. But the request management module is also email integrated. So instead of having to manage everything through an email inbox, I can do it in Argus. So if I select one of the requests, and decide to reply to the requester, a box opens up and I can reply as if I'm using my regular work email. So my email signature shows at the bottom, I can copy others in my reply, and I can even attach files. I can also browse through my requests and I can categorize them as I wish. And comes a time of evaluation. I also have the statistics tab that provides metrics and numbers on research requests. So not only I can assess the performance of the department, but I can also get insight on the user's uh, research interests, which is very important because we're according 
uh, more importance and uh, weight for all the online visits these days. And it's very important to have that because it's an indicator for the interest that is happening on our uh, online platform. So since we're talking about numbers and metrics, we can also get this type of information, but about the portal itself and the visits that take place on the portal. So I will go to settings, administration, and then statistics. So on this page, we're tracking the numbers of the visitors that come onto our portal online and they see our collections. It gives us an idea about the number of visits per day, per month, even per year, all throughout the past years. So we have an idea about how things are changing, if there are different patterns, has there, um, has there been a year where there are more visitors than other years? Uh, who's visiting, whether it's an administrator, you know, we would be able to identify who's visiting the portal an administrator, a volunteer, or uh, an actual guest, uh, what action those users took, whether they downloaded something, they printed a report, uh, they searched, they used the facets. We can have indications about all these uh, different activities, but also which areas specifically they visited and what items they also um, looked at. So by having this information, we would be able to uh, summarize, assess, evaluate, but also it helps us a lot with programming in the future, understanding what is more popular, what people are looking for, what um, topics are being researched more than others, and perhaps we can accord more weight and importance to those and have more of this material from our collections available on the portal. Another thing I would like to show you is the user contributed content or uh, crowdsourcing. So in the recent years, uh, it's been more, there's been more importance accorded to uh, community and its participation in the narratives of museums. The benefits are equally important for museums because the public helps in filling uh, information gaps in the collections. So here I'm on the portal. I'm going to simply browse the collections and select just any uh, object from the collection. And one of the ways of public participation is to open a venue for direct contribution to the published information. So on the Argus portal, an institution can choose to have an option for user contribution. And we see it right here. Once the user, the end user clicks on it, a box opens up where they would uh, have their information sent to the museum and they select what type of contribution they're making. It could be a comment, it could be a story which they would like to tell the museum that's relevant to the object, uh, information which they think is important enough to be shared with them. Uh, but they can also attach images and uh, files and share them with the museum or the institution. And all this submitted information is stored on the admin side for review and for analysis. So nothing gets published uh, directly on the portal. Everything is stored first in the back end of the system. And the last thing in this presentation today that I would like to highlight is the Argus mobile app. So the Argus mobile app uh, is an application available for staff who use Argus, who use the CMS. So they can work anytime, <coughs> excuse me, anywhere using a mobile device. The app can be used in the galleries or in the warehouse uh, to search for objects, update information such as location, or even do inventories on the go. So using the device's camera, whichever device they are using, uh, staff can also scan the barcodes 
uh, of the collection items to retrieve this data and make instant changes as needed. So that's also an additional um, component of Argus to have, and that is useful for staff that makes things faster and easier. And, you know, instead of spending a lot of time on certain tasks and duties, at least the app could also be there to help with, with the daily work. I choose to stop right here for today. I thank you so much for your time and I pass back the mic to uh, my colleague, Brad. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rima. If you have any questions about Argus or our company, our contact details are on the screen. Please feel free to reach out. On behalf of the Lucidia team, I thank you all for attending today and until next time, thanks.